Come in close. Closer. Because the more you think you see, the easier it'll be to fool you. Because what is seeing? You're looking, but what you're really doing is filtering, interpreting, searching for meaning. My job? To take that most precious of gifts you give me, your attention, and use it against you. I'm going to flip through this deck, and I want you to see one card, and not this one. That's too obvious. Pay close attention. That was too fast. I'll do it again. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. OK. Now, did you see one? Yes. Do you have one in mind? Yes. Now, do you see your card here? No. That's because you're looking too closely. And what have I been telling you all night? The closer you look, the less you see. this bill for me you can have it hey, go ahead take it get it if you can say your name you can have this <laughs> all right just hang out there wriggle a sec i'm gonna take a little peek under the hood of your hubby's oh, brain no, no, no. now i'm picturing don't tell me um beach cocktails florida look it was a business trip well, i mean it, it is a kind of business maybe the Oldest business. You know what, uh, honeybee? Let's. You uh, can't move, Mac. You're thinking of a woman's name. A B C D E F G H I J J Jean Jane if Janet. Who, who's Janet? You know Janet? It's not your best friend, is it? Your sister. No, please. Your sister. Oh my God! You weren't away on business. You were away on Janet, no. your wife's sister. <laughs> Okay, we need to move over here because it seems like she's a little bit upset right now. You want this to go away? Yes. Okay, pull out your wallet. Come on, get it out. Do you shake down everybody like this? No, only the special few. What is this, uh, 200 seem fair? You know what, this is a big deal. Let's go 250. You're a stick-up artist. Yeah, of course. Okay, and sleep. Now, when I snap my fingers, you won't remember any of this. And you, Warren Beatty, every time you see or even think of Janet, you're going to picture me <coughs> naked. And that's not a pretty sight. Yeah. And wide awake. Well, we did the best we could, but some people just aren't to be hypnotized. Oh, come on. I did it wrong? No, no, you did it fine. Well, you bite it. Look at okay. Just have to get an ATM first. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the next great magician and I will give $100 to anyone who can tell me how this trick is done. I have an ordinary spoon from Mel's Deli right here in Brooklyn. Check it out. Now everyone, please pay very, very close attention. Cause I'm about to bend this spoon with my mind. Thank you, thank you. How's that around? What's this? Well, what are you doing, man? Look at this! Looks like we got a spoon in the stem. And I got other tricks. Or you can give me my hundred bucks. You said you would. Well, you have a very good eye, sir. Thanks.
Diamonds on the side of the tower? Yes. That's a trade secret. Uh-uh. Uh, I'll give you a hint. It involved uh, bribing the tower electrician. How much? Uh, 50 bucks. <sighs> it's so hard. Oh, thank you. Is it always a seven? I could do that trick 52 different ways. Can you do 52 different tricks on me? I'll see what I can do. Ooh, magic man. Oh, mm. oh, oh. I love your shoe. Oh. Whoa, hold on. What? Oh. You need to leave. You do is I've got a sick trick you do to women. Bring them to your place. 45 and East Devon Street. No, don't, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll call you. You don't have my number. I'm magic. I'll find it. Have a good night. Oh, you are such an asshole. You, uh, you got a card, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, it's good for you. Congratulations. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go inside. I'm going to scope the place out. You wait out here. I will come back and get you, okay? Do not come in, okay? Hey, Danny. Yeah. Not your assistant anymore. Nice hair. So, um, actually, what, what have you been up to? So I, I totally think you know exactly you. what I've been up to, Danny. I saw all your anonymous posting on my website. You have a website. That's good. Good for you. Get the word out. Oh. 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 Okay, so apparently none of us was the only one chosen. Let me be the first one to kick my ego to the curb. Yeah, yeah excuse me. Door's locked. Is it? I'll check. You, now hold it, don't tell me, uh, Helen? No, no, Henley. It's on your coffee cup. Thanks for keeping me honest. Uh, that wasn't mentalism, by the way, it was just an observation. Second observation, you are beautiful. Okay, Thank you. that's good. That's very, very nice, very well polished, nice bit. Uh, Jade Daniel Atlas, nice to meet you. Very nice. I know who you are, and I just want to say that I'm not interested in you doing your uh, your mentalism thing on us, especially when we don't know who brought us here, or even if it's real. Oh, hold on, I'm sensing, I'm sensing you are a control freak. Wait, I'm sorry, have we met before? Uh, it doesn't take a mentalist to figure that out. You are a control freak. Well, I take that as a compliment. Oh, well. Only he would take it as a compliment. <laughs> okay, great. Good. Another compliment. Okay, so... Wow. That's why you're no longer a couple. A couple? Oh, no. no, 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 we, we, we were, were never, never a, a couple. couple. No. We used to saw me in half. She was a very good assistant. Yeah, but I was too fat for uh, Danny. No, I said that one time because of the, the trap door. I was, no respects. you built it this size. No one could fit through there, no one. Rebecca fit through. Uh -uh. Rebecca fit for years. Do you know how hard it is to stay in those tiny little costumes? Uh, no, I'm the main attraction. Okay, so he never made you feel special, and trust me, you deserve to be made to feel special. It's a really, really nice story. Hope you guys enjoy each other's company. No way. Jay Daniel Atlas? 
Do I've seen everything that you have ever done. I mean, you're like, I, I idolize you, right. seriously. I'm a true fan. No, it's so yeah. nice to meet you. I'm Jack, by the way. Question, did you get one of these? Yeah, oh, yeah. Death. The high priestess. And the lover. <laughs> Three minutes. <clears throat> Hermit. So uh, what are we, are we, we waiting for someone? Why, why are we just- The door's locked. locked. Oh no, nothing, nothing's ever locked. What is this place? Oh, wow, but my apartment was nasty. Man, it's freezing in here. I don't know. What's it say? Now you don't. A rose by any other name. Oh. Guys, what's happening? Whoa. Look at that. Whoa. Yes. Relax. Just dry ice. Cool. Wait, what do you think this is all about? Hang on, hang on. I got nothing. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the delay. No, I'm just trying to create the space for wisdom. Okay, so, so you're like Buddha, if he wasn't so enlightened. Oh, and, and you're like Jesus, if he was arrogant and all of his miracles were fake. Okay, lover, let's get a room. Danny, be honest. Did you do this? No. Wait, did you? Well, I wish. Why didn't anyone ask me if I did it? Yeah. Oh, great. Electricity's out. Well, let's check. going to rob a bank. Absolutely no recording allowed during the performance. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, of course. Let me just put this away. Actually, I need to take that. After the show, I can come and give it back to you. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, please, please settle down. Now, now, who here has a bank they would like us to rob? Uh, okay, uh, that's, that's a lot of people with the vendetta. So we'll choose one at random then. My, my associates will make sure it's random, right? 
Jack Elvis. Help me out, bud. Thank you very much. In Jack's bowl are ping pong balls with section numbers. Jack, can you hand me a section number? Thank you. We are looking at section B. Where is section B? Okay, there. It's going to be one of you guys. Get ready. All right, I don't know why everybody's happy. It's, it's only them. Merritt, can I get a row, please? Thank you, Merritt. We are looking at row number five. Where is that? And uh, Henley, can I please have a random seat number? Oh, lucky number 13. B513, where are you? Sir, please stand up. Ah, there you are. Hi. Great. And could you just confirm for me that this is, in fact, your seat, B513? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Now, could you please tell us your name and the name of your bank? Well, my name is uh, Etienne Forcier, and my bank is uh, Crédit Républicain de Paris. French, okay. Uh, we were hoping for something a little more local, a kind of mom and pop credit union with no security, but that's fine. A uh, promise is a promise. Could you please come up to the stage? We'll, uh, we'll rob your bank. And, and while he does that, um, there is someone here tonight without whom we would just be four magicians working the circuit, trying to get, well, actually trying to get here. You probably know this man, if not from one of the many, many companies he puts his name on. He is our friend, he is our benefactor, Mr. Arthur Tressler. Please stand up, Arthur. Please stand up. The only man here with the Queen's cell phone number. <laughs> actually, please st stay standing, Art. Um, I want to say that when we came to Mr. Tressler, we promised that as a unit, we could become the biggest name in magic. So we wanted to say thank you, and by the way, Art, you noticed in the sign out front, we made sure we put your name on top. If you turn out to be as good as you think you are, dear girl, that won't be necessary much longer. We haven't done our closer yet. Why don't you watch it and then you can decide for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, Arthur Tressler. Thank you. And of course, once again, the Cardinal of Clairvoyance, Merritt McKinney. At the end, uh, what Jack is bringing to the stage now is what we in the magic world call a teleportation helmet. You will need to wear this as it will allow you to literally fold through space and time to your bank in the eighth, ninth yeah. arrondissement. <laughs> now, uh, once you are there, we will be able to speak with you through this helmet. Now, it, oh, oh, oh my God, that's beautiful. It has the added attraction of being very stylish. It's about time the French learned from America on that subject. Is that a Thank beautiful you. piece of headgear? It is. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe. Oui. Maybe. Oui. But before you go anywhere, could you please pick a card, any card? Not that card. Ooh. No, that's, that's okay. Uh, it's an old American joke. You can take that one. Okay. There you go. Swap. Now, show it to your friends in section B there, but, but not to us. Okay, great. Now, if you could just sign your name yes. there. Uh, in English, if possible. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Put it in your pocket. And now for one tiny detail. Let's step into this Hakamami contraption, and I'll step off of it. Bon chance. It's 11.50 p.m. here in Vegas. That's 8.50 a.m. in Paris. Your bank opens in less than 10 minutes. One, two, three. What the fuck? Whoa. Wow. Etienne? Etienne. That wasn't Etienne. supposed to happen like that, was it? Etienne. I like that little French guy. Where'd he go? Wait, th th there he is. No, 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 please, please, please. This is Daniel Atlas, can you hear me? Etienne, are you okay? Yes. Perfect. What, what do you see in there? Money. Is this real? Yes, looks like three million or so euros worth. Oh, <laughs> Okay, now, now, now here's what we're going to need you to do. I want you to take the card that you signed out of your pocket, and I want you to take the ticket stub from tonight's show, and I want you to put it right there in the middle of the money. Now, drop it. Of your helmet, you should feel a button. 
Now, don't, don't press it just yet. Now, that button activates an air duct that connects Paris to, to Las Vegas. Okay, good. Now you can press it. All right, now, Etienne, hold on tight. You might feel a bit of a vacuum. <laughs> Wait a second. I heard you correctly. Did you say magicians? Yeah, Dylan. Magicians. Where are you now? I'm at Aria. I'm heading up there to grab him now. FBI! Hands where I can see him. Let's go. Get him up. up. Come on. Phenomenato. Let's go. Get him up. Put the book down. Okay. You got me. Freeze! Hands in there! Oh, my. Do one of you guys mind giving us a hand with our bags? Let's go. I'm a month, two tops away from blowing this whole thing open. Get your turkles in. He's in Atlantic City. W what about Colin? Look at him. He's just sitting there on his ass. Hilarious, Rhodes. I love you. Asshole. I don't have time for this magic crap. This crap just pulled three million euro out of a Parisian bank. That's how much they got? Yeah. Actually, 3.2. Who is she? Yeah. Who are you? Alma Dre from Interpol. I'll be working the investigation. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. It's bad enough they got me chasing down David Copperfield and friends. Now I'm being saddled with, oh, no offense, with Interpol. I look forward to working with you too, Aiden Rhodes. I'm sorry. I don't think I'm gonna need your help on this, okay? Where's the French guy? I already spoke to him. Oh, you did? You, you, you spoke to my witness before me. Your witness? I thought you didn't want the case. Besides, he's useless. Oh, oh really? Why is that? Because he believes the magic was real. Oh, he believes the magic is real. You're right. He probably is useless. So is it okay with Interpol if, if we talk to him too? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I had never stolen a thing in my life, okay? I tried to give the money back, but they won't take it. Okay, okay, okay. Let's just say you robbed a bank. I did. Fine, fantastic, you did. But since I'm new to this, can you explain to me how you went from Las Vegas to Paris in three seconds? With the teleportation helmet. Okay, what the hell's going on here? He was hypnotized during the show. I told you, he's useless. Okay, I'll deal with you when I'm done with this other bullshit. Hey, during the show, half the audience was hypnotized to believe they were in the Philharmonic. I guess it... Bullshit was a trigger word. <sighs> okay, hey, hey, écoutez, Etienne, come on down from there. You're not, you're not in the Philharmonic. How do you say stop in French? Stop. Tell him to stop. No, I can't. You just have to let him finish his movement. 
Okay, I need a timeout. Too many French people in one room. Agent Rhodes. Huh? I'm ordered by my bosses to prevent a report. And until we have one, I'm here, like it or not. So we can work together, or you can continue to follow behind asking the same exact questions I'm asking. It's up to you. I'm not finished. I just flew 12 hours after what was already a long day, and I do not handle jet lag well. So, if you want to see who can be grumpier, I promise you, you will lose. Hmm. <laughs> Fine. So which one of these idiots do you want to talk to first? Him? Dylan, for the record, mentalism, it's never actually been proven to be accurate. Okay. That is to say that it's not a science. It's, it's you know, it's more for entertainment. All right. Just, just don't believe everything the guy says. That's all. Please convey my deepest apologies to your colleague out there. I'm really sorry about this whole Tranny Tuesday thing. It, I was out of line. Tranny Tuesday? Well, it's an arrangement he and his wife have, or might not have, if you believe everything Agent Fuller is saying to be correct, but... Isn't there a proud tradition in the FBI of men wearing dresses? No shame, Agent Fuller. No shame. <laughs> Just having fun. Was this your card? No. See, I knew you weren't a queen of hearts lady, and I respect that. The trick usually works better when I'm not strapped in here, but I understand protocol. Okay, okay. So, if you had nothing to do with it, then how did the playing card get into the vault? Oh, yes, that would be, uh, yeah, what do the kids call it these days? Oh, yes, that's right, magic. Just answer the question, okay, okay. smartass? All right, sorry, sorry, sorry. You can keep that. Don't share it with him. It says here you are a, a mentalist. Mm. Well, what exactly is mentalism? Tricks mostly, um, some science, uh, targeted guessing might be a most apt description, along with some intuition and the occasional voices in my head. <laughs> Sounds like you're, you're fairly famous at one point. Mm -hmm. you, you can even hypnotize people over the phone. Hmm. Some big tours around the U.S. for a few years, two TV specials. Glory days. Then you're brother slash manager disappeared with all your hard-earned money. <clears throat> did your research, did you? IRS audit, back taxes. You, you've had a long, hard slog back into the limelight, haven't you, Mr. McKinney? Yes, indeed it has, and I do appreciate that trip down memory lane. Um, as far as I understand it, when the man from Paris uh, put on the magical helmet, I guess there was Listen some to me. That, yeah. If you didn't rob that bank, then you knew about it which makes you an accomplice. So if you want to walk out of here today, I'd suggest you start. Okay, now you listen to me. I'm gonna... Unless you think there's a DA in the state of Nevada who'd be willing to make sense of this to a jury, then we have a show to perform. And you, Agent Rhodes, have a drawing board to get back to. Is this your first date? What? No, I mean, I'm, obviously you guys don't know each other well, if at all, but like there is a palpable tension in this room. And before you get involved, you should consider the fact that she has a lot of big secrets. And I know the first one is that this is your first time off the desk, isn't it? You should have said something to him. This is a weird way for you to find out. You are literally begging to be arrested, you know that? If it means you would actually do it, then yeah, but you won't. Because if you did, it means that you and the FBI and your, your friends at Interpol actually believe at an institutional level in magic. The press would have a field day. And we'd be even more famous than we already are. And you guys would look like idiots even more than you already are. Well, no, not you, but him, right? Listen, you have what we in the business like to call nothing up your sleeve. And you know it. Don't draw him in and then dump him because abandonment is a big area for him. Mommy? Daddy. Ah, you have big daddy issues. Okay, that's enough. I'll tell you what, your average therapist is gonna charge you two, three hundred for this sesh. Me, I'll take a tenner. Okay, later, if you're feeling magnanimous, I'll still take a tenner. You wanna know who sat in that chair before you? Mob bosses, murderers, and thieves. Oh. And you know who put him there? The guy who's sitting in this chair. So I warn you. I can maintain my resolve much longer than you can maintain that phony arrogance. And the instant that you even show the slightest crack in that smug facade, I'll be there. I will be all over you like... Like white on rice? Sorry, that's unfair. Let me warn you. I want you to follow. 
because no matter what you think you might know, we will always be one step, three steps, seven steps ahead of you. And just when you think you're catching up, that's when we'll be right behind you. And at no time will you be anywhere other than exactly where I want you to be. So come close, get, get all over me because the closer you think you are, the less you'll actually see. I'm gonna nail you. <laughs> Something wrong with that soda, miss? of magic. Always be the smartest guy in the room. admitted they're gonna do it again. But a half an hour ago, you didn't give a damn about them. What changed? I met them. Hey, guys. Hey, I ran a check on the audience. Most of it was just filler. People that trust are dragged in to pack the room. But guess who was sitting there in the back filming the whole damn thing? I don't know. Thaddeus Bradley. Thaddeus Bradley, the guy from TV with the DVDs and the shows? No. Okay, well, he debunks magicians. He exposes them. He shows you how to do the tricks. Get him on the phone. I did. You're having lunch with him in 45. Good. Mr. Bradley started as a magician. He was actually quite good. Really? One of the best. Oh, you don't say. The greatest genius is in seeing through the illusion. <clears throat> That's a man who loves his work. Sure, I can't interest you in a glass of wine. Oh, no, 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 thank you, sir. We're, we're working. I would take one. Wow, that's incredible. That's amazing. Red dye, palm. Is that how Jesus did it? That's incredible. I'm sorry, can I just take a minute here? You're one of the great magicians. Why did you stop? You know how many people went to see magic performed live in the last half decade? About a million six. You know how many DVDs I sold in the same period? Five million. Oh, right, so it's about the money. Well, the money is only there because the need to know is greater than the desire to be fooled. Like you, I detest those who prey upon the gullibility of the masses. With all due respect, isn't there a cost, though, to this game? Cost? Don't know, careers, lives. I assume you're referring to Lionel Shrank. I'm sorry, uh, who? Lionel Shrank, a meddling magician who drowned in the Hudson River. 30 years ago. On Mr. Bradley's first special, he revealed all of Schweik's tricks. The next year, Schweik tried to stage a comeback. He was shackled inside a safe and dropped into the river, but he never resurfaced. Oh, you mean he, he died? I didn't kill him. He killed himself, trying to do something he wasn't prepared to handle. You do realize this is a game. Oh, believe me, it's not a game. It is a game. You're the game, you're being played, and your pathetic attempts at fawning to gain my trust. I mean, come on. Uh, you got me. If you really want to know how a bank in Paris was robbed from a stage in Las Vegas, my special comes out next month. Or I could just bring you in on obstruction charges and force you to tell me, unless, of course, what you're trying to say to me is that you actually don't know how they did it. Showmanship and the end. When a magician waves his hand and says, this is where the magic is happening, the real trick is happening somewhere else. Misdirection, a basic concept of magic. Not interested in the concepts of magic. I want to know how they robbed the bank. You're an idiot if you think they robbed the bank. But don't take my word for it. How about a trip to Paris? Hermia, the teleportation helmet, please, darling. You're joking, right? You want to know how they did it or not? Step right up. There you go. Now we just pull this down all safe and snug. Make yourself comfortable. There we go. And when you're ready to go to Paris, just say the magic word. Blow me. That'll suffice. Au voyage. Bonjour. 
I personally prefer to take the stairs to Paris. Welcome to the City of Light, Agent Rhodes. Hardy har har, what was with the helmet? My fun. <laughs> what? Nothing. Oh. <laughs> so they got a vault set. Yes. And it's the exact replica of the little French guy's bank. So he's a plant. He was a dupe, not a plant. They chose him. They knew which seat he was in. No, 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 the audience picked the seat. Unless, of course, the audience didn't pick the seat. They let them think they picked the seat. We'll choose one at random, then. Jack Actually, they were just pounding the ball with the seat number they wanted. We are looking at row number five. Henley, could I please have a seat number? Lucky number 13. And could you just confirm that this is, in fact, your seat? He was selected. They programmed his mind to make Even him go to Las Lake. Vegas. And then they kept reinforcing it until he did. They trailed him. They studied him. Nothing was left to chance. Oh, oh. Oh, Mr. I got his measurements. He had no idea he was their target. And they simply activated him in Vegas. And once again, Merritt McKinney. But how did they know what bank was his? You're kidding. Really? Can you be any more of a condescending ass? Yes. <laughs> like this. That was a very rare very mysterious way in which a magician defines an audience member's bank. You ready? Yes. Credit card. And that's how they got the signature for the card they left in the vault in Paris. Very good. You're being one up, Agent Rhodes. Okay, but they had to get the signature card in the vault. You said they didn't steal the money. No, I didn't say they didn't steal the money. I said they didn't rob the bank. My guess is that they targeted a shipment of freshly minted money headed to the Frenchman's bank on board an armored truck. Which, of course, is just as hard to break into, unless you're already inside. these trucks are not exactly metal giants. For our horsemen, it was almost too easy. Hey, boys. So how did they make the fake money disappear from the vault? What is that? Flash paper. Magicians use it all the time. Creates no smoke, leaves no residue. Oh, Meld. Two days ago, no one heard of these guys, but tonight's show sold out in 35 seconds. I think these guys have cracked the secret to show business. Give your audience three million dollars. <laughs> Puts them in a good mood, doesn't it? Best finale ever. They're gonna be the first magicians in history to get laid. Remember, if the oxygen mask comes down... Put it on the lawyer first, oh, yeah. remember. I, I always do. It's lawyer first, then myself, then yourself. and then the children. Yes, then the children. <laughs> Um, allow me to make plain what we've both been thinking. And what's that? Well, obviously you have feelings of affection for Daniel, unrequited and misguided, owing to his lack of emotional availability. Uh, consequently, you're very tightly, how should I put it, um, corked. Oh, I am. Now, recognizing that you have physical needs not being met and strictly in the vein of helping a sister out, I invite you to think of me as your own personal Corkscrew. Wow, thanks. Let me mull over that offer of cheap and meaningless sex. Cheap and, and meaningless, maybe, but uh, not time consuming. <laughs> should be in there a few minutes early, so sit back, relax, and should be in the big easy soon. Appreciate you flying with us today. <clears throat> so, what's in it for Tressler besides the money? Ego. Okay, pick your card, look at it, put it in the deck, and tell me. Uh -huh. Don't talk to Okay. Thaddeus was there that night. He knows exactly how they pulled it off. What about him? What are you saying? 
think they could be working together. I don't know. All I know is that these guys are a bunch of street magicians a year ago with no resources. So how do they go from doing that to this without some kind of outside help? Is this a cow then? No, my car's sitting over there in that guy's lap. Nice shuffle. Mm -hmm. You know, this is hard. According to this book, some of those guys practice one simple move eight hours a day for years. This is crazy. Really? Some of those guys seriously need to get a life. Is it magicians in general you have a problem with, or specifically those guys? Uh, I could care less about magicians in general. What I hate is people who exploit other people. Exploit them how? Try again. Uh, by taking advantage of their weaknesses, their need to believe in something that's unexplainable in order to uh, make their lives more bearable. I see it as a strength. My life is happier when I believe that. Is this your card? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> that smile on your face, is it real? Maybe. So let me ask you, Mr. Detective Man. Do you feel exploited or did you have maybe a tiny, tiny bit of fun? Guy <laughs> goes to the doctor, <laughs> doctor says, sir, you're gonna have to stop masturbating. He says, why? He says, so I can finish the examination. Oh, hey, Danny, can I talk to you about my role in the show yeah, real yeah, quick? Yeah, sure. Hey, guys. Uh, we got a show to prepare for. Oh. Oh. Do we now? No, 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 don't do that. You're not doing the thing to me. No, no, no. What thing? I'm just looking no, at No, you're not. I've been watching you for a year. I know all of your little tricks. Is that what they are to you, tricks? Yes, it's it's gimmicks. It's Barnum statements. It's reading the eyes, body language. If I get it. It's such an easy thing. Why don't you do Henley? Yeah, Danny. Why don't you do me? No, you're too easy. I'll do uh, I'll do Jasmine. No. Do me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, do art. Okay. <sighs> Even better. Art. Yeah. But I warn you, I can be difficult to read when I want to be. Just uh, stay with me, okay? So, Art, you were a tough kid, you know, kind of a real rapscallion. You had a dog, a real tough dog, a brutish breed, like yeah. a real, I want to say, Ben the Bulldog. Actually, I was a prissy little tot. I had a fluffy white cat called Snuffles. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, oh, wait, wait, let me try one. I can do let it way any better it, than that. Come on, give me one more time, one more time, one more time. You can do way better than that. Family. Let's do family. You had an uncle on your mother's side. He had a real kind of a real masculine name, a real kind of salt of the earth, you know, real stick it to you, <laughs> like it was uh, some kind of Paul Thompson? Was it a Paul? <sighs> okay, you know what? I got nothing. Nearly though. Was I? Yeah, my uncle's name was Cushman Armitage. <laughs> really? Snuffles and Cushman Armitage. That was your childhood. I certainly hope tonight's show is going to be better than this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Just you wait. Come on, give me some good news on a uh, hotel room, please. What are you, kidding me? No, it's Mardi Gras, Dylan. There's nothing within sight of the theater. Hold on a second. Hold on. Where is this woman? Hey, hey. There you are. What, the French girl doing a little sightseeing while she's in New Orleans? No. In fact, here, speaking French is actually a message. Huh? You see the woman up there? That's my Claire. And she has a lovely apartment for us. Mm. You're welcome. Yeah. We got a place. I want two each inside of here. The other 30 around here. Roofs, alleys, balconies, eyes on the horsemen at all times. Yes, sir. All right. Wow. A hundred years ago, William Robinson took the name Chong Ling Su and spent his entire life never speaking English in public. This older guy, Max Mayer. I am not interested in a history lesson on magic at this moment. If you want to keep playing into their hands, go for it. I'm just trying to understand how they think. You think I'm playing in their hands, do you? I don't know how any of that is going to go against this. This what? This magic? Lionel Shrike in Central Park. He has a guy pick a card and sign it. Then he goes to a tree that's been there 20 years. They saw the tree in half. Inside the tree, encased in glass, the card with the signature. How do you do that? I have no idea, but I'm sure there's a logical explanation. Excuse me. Hey, do you guys got a guy in that lobby yet? No, but I do have some good news. Remember how Atlas is such a control freak? He's got his whole crew on those tracking bracelets? What tracking bracelets? He has every member of his crew wearing a tracking bracelet. Those bracelets are on a right, sub-8 flat band. So, as long as Atlas is tracking them, Next. our boys can track Atlas from right here in the mobile command unit. Okay, call me if you get any movement. 
Copy that. You're missing the big picture here today. There is a place in Paris, Pont des Arts. Sometimes in the mornings I sit on a bench there and I watch the people make a wish and lock it in a lock on the bridge, then throw the key into the Seine. All day they do this. Mothers, lovers, old men, watching the key sink into the water and their secret is locked away forever. Real and at the same time, magical. So, do you really think it's possible there's a fifth horseman? Yeah. There is a legend of a secret order born in ancient Egypt called the Eye. It is said they perfected sleight of hand to steal food from the pharaohs and give it to the slaves. Their purpose? Using magic and delusion to even the scales of justice. Are the horsemen next in a long line of fools to believe this myth? Will they evade the rules of law and logic like they did in Las Vegas? Or will the dark mysticism of this southern swampland get the better of them? Bravo, Mr. Bradley. Either you have a cease and desist, but you don't, or you should leave. If I want something to cease or desist, it does. Take five. According to your potential backers, you stand to make two and a half million tops from your best special. I have here, check, three and a half million. To walk away? To fly away. My jet is at your disposal. Let's not kid ourselves, Mr. Tressler. You're in this to ride them up. I'm in it to ride them down. I take it that we do not have a deal. And therein lies our conflict. Let me be blunt. My bank account is much, much bigger than yours. And my lawyers are much stronger. And they will manacle you with so many injunctions until you stand by hopelessly watching everything that you own drain away in front of your greedy little eyes. This isn't the first time I've been threatened. And I'm still here. It is, however, the first time you've been threatened by me. And if you do anything to sully my investment, the ride down that you mentioned will be sudden, precipitous, and measurable on the Richter scale. Oops, you shouldn't have done that. According to superstition, one who uses a doll to enact one's own wrath is likely to bring that very wrath unto himself. Isn't that funny? And I thought you didn't believe in magic. Do me a favor, visualize your most adventurous sexual experience. Stay out of my head, you perv. Uh, well, no, if I stay out of your head, I'm never gonna get in your pants. So let's stick right. with this exercise, and it helps Pardon me. the intrusion. Just wanted to wish you good luck tonight. What, so you can try to expose us later on your little website? And on demand. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. Oh, no? Operating on a special plane because of the eye? I hear it's a lovely place. Lots of star shine, moonbeams. Make any magician's wish come true. You've come a long way. Much further than anyone would have expected of a bunch of wannabes and has-beens. Oh, if by has-been you're referring to me, I just want to say I'm flattered because I always considered myself a uh, never-was. Uh, do you mind if I do a quick read on you? By all means. Uh, okay, I'm uh, picturing 
a little boy who wants to be a great magician someday. And though he's good, he's not quite good enough. So he ends up at the bottom of the entertainment food chain, feeding off of those who have the talent that he never did. Tell me, am I getting close? Um, wait, be before you go, I'm just, uh, I'm working on something new. Do you have a second? Okay, uh, name a card. King of Hearts. Knew it. Okay. It's up your left sleeve. Is it? No. Well, no, I don't see it up there. You know, why don't you check your, uh, unnecessary velveteen pocket there? Uh, anyway, thank you so much for coming by, but this is kind of a, a talent-only area, so. Break a leg. Hey, you break something, too. Ladies and gentlemen, the Savoy Management welcomes you to tonight's special performance, The Four Horsemen, Act Two. Unlike traditional performances, The Four Horsemen encourage you to film, call your friends, upload, stream, and tweet the show freely. Thank you. The show will begin in a few minutes. Nice watch. Huh? Nah, it's a family heirloom. Oh, by the way, I know how we did that trick. Who? Shrike. So, when he was 14, he saw a hole in a tree in Central Park. He had a guy who worked at the carousel, signed a card for what looked like a routine little trick. And? At the guy's retirement, 18 years later, Shrike performs, has the guy sign a card, and presto. The card is in the tree. It was in the tree for 18 years. The card is in the tree. The tree grew around the card in 18 years. I mean, that isn't magic. It's not magic. The point is, the trick was not to look closely. It was to look so far that you see 20 years into the past. After Shrike drowned, they never found the body. What are you suggesting? Arthur Tressler presents Jack Wilder, Henley Reeves, Merritt McKinney, and Daniel Atlas, The Four Horsemen. Thank you. Before we begin, we'd like to uh, single out two people in particular, a man and a woman, to whom we'd like to dedicate tonight's performance. FBI agent Dylan Rhodes and the lovely, if somewhat inexperienced, Interpol agent Alma Dre, everyone. Yeah, Agent Rhodes has personally vowed to, quote, nail us. And we encourage him to do so if he has the brains and the fur. <laughs> uh -huh. What is magic? Our argument, nothing but targeted deception. So I want you to look. Look as closely as possible. Because the tricks you are about to see may not seem connected, but we assure you they are. Is what follows 100 different tricks? Or is it one giant illusion? And now for one of the oldest tricks in the book. Danny, if you wouldn't mind opening up the box and showing everybody that it's completely empty. Now we're gonna need 12 courageous volunteers. I'm gonna take sweet little Fluffy here and put her inside this mystery box. Yes. There are two pencils out there. Hold them up high. Let me see them. Yeah. yeah. And now you will say the magic word. Uh, abracadabra. Yes, and I will wave this magic wand for no reason. <laughs> and then Fluffy has magically vanished before your very eyes. You haven't experienced mass hypnosis. You're about to. And sleep. Down, down. Sleep, sleep. Sleep, sleep, good, good, sleep, sleep. And now we are gonna debunk a few magic myths this evening. We all know that Fluffy is in fact alive and well. And Fluffy has miraculously appeared. As has the mirror, which makes the box only appear as though it's empty. When you hear the word free, you are all football players. And your job is to tackle, dismantle, crush, tear limb from limb. The quarterback. Now we've all heard of pulling the rabbit out of the hat. 
But has anyone heard of pulling a hat out of a rabbit? You will know who the quarterback is. He will be the one saying that word. Freeze. At the intermission, we ask you to write down your current bank balance, seal it in an envelope. Now it's time to take those envelopes out. Everyone take them out. Now, everybody, shout out your name all at once. Go. Shout them out. Oh, Cle Clement? Frantic? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, way up there. Okay, what, Dina? Robertson? That's me. Okay, name. Name. Let's go. Josepha? Hickey? That's me. Josepha, I want you to focus on your balance and count from 1 to 10 out loud. One, two, three, four, five. Stop. Uh, is the first digit five? Yes. Do it again this time fast. One, two, three, four, five, six. Stop. Six. Again. One, two, three. Josepha, is your bank balance $562 as of today? Yeah, that's what I got. Uh, unfortunately, you're wrong. Okay, Dina. Um, one, four, Seven, seven, yeah. you think it is, but in fact, you two are wrong. Uh, Clement, you do not have $6,500 in your account. In fact, everybody stand up, everybody. Yeah, put your envelopes to your forehead, focus on your number. Ooh, oh, this is... Oh dear, just as I feared. Oh, this is strange. You know, I hate to say this, but you're all wrong. Every last one of you is dead wrong about what you think is in your account. Okay, you can sit down now. Oh, oh yeah, uh, I almost forgot. This evening would not be possible if it weren't for our great benefactor, Arthur Tressel. Yeah. Big applause, big applause. All right, actually, why, why don't you come up on stage? Yeah, for the finale. Come on down, Come Art. Come on down, Art. There he goes. Okay, good. Are we in red? Right red. We're all standing by. All right, no one leaves the theater, no one. There he goes. Now, Art, did you fill out your envelope? Mm -hmm. Well, no need. We've done it for you. Now, Art, I took a guess north of 140. Am I right? That's 140 million, by the way. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sorry, Merritt. How can he be right about his balance and everyone else be wrong? I think possibly because he too is wrong. Now everybody take out your paper and using the flashlight under your seat, start to warm up that paper. I think your correct balance begins to appear. Now, Art, don't worry, we have a flashlight for you. Yes. Whoa. Uh -huh. What's going on there, Daniel? Uh, wait, uh, this is weird. A second ago it said 144579651 but now, now it says $70,000 less. Now, uh, Josepha, can you stand yes. up? 
Now, what, what is your new number? $70,562 now in my account. Is it possible that Josefa's balance went up the exact amount that Art's went down? Well, hey, check it out. It's happening again. Is it? Wow. It is. Art's balance has gone down another 280K. Dina Robertson, what did yours say? $281,477. We have a confession to make. She's right. We lied about something. Yes, none of you were chosen at random. All of you have one thing in common. Everyone in this room was a victim of the hard times that hit one of America's most treasured cities. Some of you lost your houses, your cars, your businesses, your loved ones. But all of you were insured by the same company. Tressler Insurance. You were abandoned. You were loopholed. Out of your settlements. This is all for show. Correct. Oh, I mean, we're doing it on stage in front of a paying audience, then yes, whoa, it's for show. Whoa, whoa. I've got $82,000 on my bank account. It, it says it right here on my cell phone. Look, everybody, look at your cell phones right now. Everybody. <laughs> hey, is this for real? I, I don't know. Is this happening? I don't know. I can't tell. Hey, did you do this? How good we are. We don't have your password. We'd need access to information we could never get our hands on. Ah, uh, yes, security questions, for instance, like, I don't know, your mother's maiden name or, or the name of your first pet. Where would we get that information, Art? You certainly would never tell us. Oh, we got confirmation. It's really happening. They robbed him. Do not let them get away. Hey, we left you the jet and the rolls. Tim right there. Follow the red dot. All right, I'll take this. Go. Box him. Cut him off that way. He's turning left after Gundy.
an exchange place. who was publicly ridiculed and even tackled at the night's performance. Talk about a fumble. Well, you know, this is quickly becoming a national story as the horse of the now pulled off the African Two nights ago in Vegas, the horse was Hey. What are you doing? I'm having a drink. I came to get you. I'm worried about you. You're worried about me? Well, I'm worried about you. Atlas, you had... He didn't have a weapon. I couldn't shoot him, and you know that. Yeah, but you, you let him go. Didn't you? A pretty French girl shows up out of the blue, acts like she's my Let's partner, go. and then she my lets arm. the bad guy go? Who exactly are you, anyway? <clears throat> uh, I thought you said you were a desk agent. Certainly nothing I want to get into tonight. You're dismissive enough about me when you're sober. Find your way back yourself. Mr. Bradley? Mr. Tressa would like you to join him for a drink. Sir? Thank you. What is your role? with them. Roll? Yes, you seem to know everything about them, what they're going to do, where they're going to be. If it makes you feel any better, this wasn't about you. Please tell me why this was not about me. This is a magic trick, Mr. Tesla. Played out on a global scale. You, sir, are the abracadabra. The distraction while they set up the real trick. I was a hundred and forty million dollar Distraction? Yes. And that very ego that got you involved with them in the first place is what keeps you from seeing that. You know... I can destroy you. Yes, I do know. Well, you won't. And you won't destroy them. Whatever this grand trick is, it was designed a long time ago. And I believe that what's about to follow is really going to amaze. So I suggest you sit back and enjoy your front row seat. You paid quite a lot of good money for it. Whatever you stand to make, I'll double it if you expose them now and destroy them. I stand to make five million. Am I flinching?
sorry for your arm. I know, I'm, I'm sorry. I was, I was an asshole. I was drunk. I, I, I'm at a loss. I, I, you know, when Mary said that Harley spends any time away from the desk, she was right. I'm a researcher. That's what I do best. So, what's this all about? Supposedly, if you buy into it, the eye are the keepers of real magic and the protectors of those who practice it. Candidates for initiations must follow a series of commands with blind obedience. This isn't real. But there are some who think it is. Mary. According to these, they only take new people twice a century. So what, the horsemen are doing these shows in order to get into this thing? Uh, I don't know, I mean, I guess these guys could just rob banks to rob banks. They don't have to put on a show for that. It's probably just a myth. But it doesn't make any sense, and I don't think logic will solve this for us. Oh, uh, you don't say. No. I believe that some things are only discovered if you take certain, certain leaps. If did exist, we'd have to assume they were watching us, right? Shit. I think someone's watching us, but it isn't magic. Your fears are correct. This is not and has never been your phone. It's a clone in every way, except for this. A bug. Someone has heard every call, read every text. That's how they were able to stay ahead of us. God damn it. Uh, Get me Atlas's interrogation tape. Yes, sir. Have it on the hard drive. Up. Okay, fast forward. Go on, go on, go on. Freeze. Okay, frame by frame. Go on. Play through. Ah, stop. Zoom in tighter. Tighter. There. That's where he took my phone. Is that thing transmitting? Only when you're making a call or sending a text. Plus, I removed the bug. All right, put it back in and turn on the phone. They don't know that we know about the bug. As of this instant, we are ahead of them. We need to keep it that way. Understand? Find my real phone and track it. Already did. As of about 20 minutes ago, it's in New York City. Good. I want to cut them off at the knees. They got power, cut it. They got phones, electricity, water, cut it. Squeeze them out. I want them to feel our presence. And hey, get me an airplane. The firewall's down. Do they know about this? They who? They, them, whoever we're working for. But who are we working for? And are we prepared to go to jail for this? Okay, stop being paranoid. It really does happen. Yeah, it happened to you. It doesn't mean it's gonna happen to us. Guys, I don't know if I can do this, all right? I don't wanna go to jail, you know? Then don't screw up. All right, you're always talking about wanting to be treated like an adult. Now might be a good time to start acting like one. Stick to the plan. Stay here and burn it all. I'm here for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. That's it. And I'm gone. You can do whatever you want when this is over, Merrick, but until then, you stick to the plan. Hey, guys. Uh, they're here. My guys are ready to go. Uh, let's do this quickly. Uh, no. What? She doesn't have jurisdiction. She's Interpol. She's with me. She stays. What? Baskin. What? Stand in car. Let's go. Stand by. Okay, let's do it. Seed or fried? Shredded. I'll tell the chef.
Number six. You little shit. You little shit. What game you playing? What game you playing? We're all good at six. Move to seven. Copy that. Go to seven. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. tell me to stay in the car, ever! I didn't have tactical command. If you don't trust me, just tell me. Promise me next time you will back me up. Can we have this conversation later, please? No! Okay, fine, I promise, now go! Go! Whoa! Where are they? I don't know. She just took some guy's Where are car. they? That way, that way. Is that your car? Uh, yeah, let's go. Ah! <laughs> 
controversial group of magicians who have been fast capturing the public's imagination took a dark turn when a police action that began in Chinatown developed into a dramatic high-speed chase across the 59th Street Bridge, which caused a fatal collision that took the life of Jack Wilder, one of the so-called Four Horsemen. The whereabouts of the other three horsemen remain unknown at this time. Dylan, they just figured out what the paper was in Jack's car. So they know what it is and why the kid died trying to protect it. Evans is on his way to brief us right now. All right, let's go. You're going to want to take this first, though. What's that? Your friend Thaddeus Bradley. Rhodes. You do understand the function of the magician's assistant, don't you, Agent Rhodes? Yeah, she's there to distract him while he sets up the trick. <laughs> well, you'd be right if you weren't so wrong. Why are you watching the magician? That lovely innocent is actually pulling the strings. Don't you find it peculiar that Interpol will send you a first-timer off the desk to be your assistant? Why does she request to be put on the case? She was assigned to the case. Oh. Luck of the draw. Like choosing a random card in the deck. I find it odd your sudden act of generosity. What's in it for you? Just trying to even the game. I feel like I'm playing with somebody wearing ankle weights and nippers. Keep up, Agent Rhodes. Keep up. Hey. hey, we got a problem. Here's the thing. No, 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 no. Hey, 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 what's he doing here? Giving us our first solid lead. We've been investigating a private security contractor called Elkhorn for the last five years. And? They've been hiding close to a half billion dollars. I didn't ask you. I asked him. The money's in a vault inside a warehouse in Queens. We think this vault is your magician's final target. The magician who died on the bridge? You pulled our classified Elkhorn file right from his crispy little hand. And despite their bullshit Robin Hood razzle-dazzle, your magicians are nothing more than common thieves. Now they get the file. This is the part you're gonna find particularly interesting, Agent Rhodes. They patched to my server after they accessed your mobile command center from New Orleans with codes they got from your phone. You ordered us all out to chase after him. The level of incompetence displayed on this case, that's a magic trick in and of itself. Abracadabra, I'm taking over. Boss. He's taking over? Let's go, gentlemen. Hey. Hey, I want to have a word with you. Those efforts are too Why the hell did you take this case? What? People say I'm hard to read. That's an American expression. Do you understand it? Yes. Good. Now let me make myself perfectly clear to you. If I find out that you are anything other than who you say you are, I swear. And we French also have an expression. La foi soulève les montagnes. Faith can move mountains. If we hope to capture the horsemen, then you need to have a little faith in me. Because I've done nothing to deserve otherwise. I just got my ass handed to me. I am losing this case, so faith is a luxury I don't have any time for right now. More than anything in his life, Jack wanted to be the most famous magician who ever lived. I can't say he achieved it, but I do hope wherever he is, it is full of magic. But the point is, <coughs> sorry, the point is, the point of why we are here is to say that we are not, we cannot quit now. We've started something bigger than all of us. We have to finish it. Approaching the warehouse. Units five and six cover the north and south entrance. We are going for the vault. Where's the safe? Where's the safe? What is this? Where the hell is the goddamn safe? We just moved it while you were outside. Evan's orders. What? I never said that. Sir, you got a phone call and said Washington wants the safe. You moved. never heard that come out of my mouth, Agent. What happened? You tell me what's going on, because this is bullshit! No! Sir, sir, what are you doing? I think it's Beethoven's concerto in D major. Where's the safe? His team's loading the truck.
hell's going on? We get our orders. Now you got new orders. Open it up. Okay, here's what I want. At this moment, they think that safe is leaving this site. So we stay with it. We follow it all the way to, uh, where's it going? Five points, up the street. So we go to Five Points. Wherever the safe goes, we go. It'll lead us right to them. All right, come on. Let's go. You two are with me. Go. Guys. Look, the cops just caught with this. Horseman posted it to YouTube 20 minutes ago. The point of why we are here is to say that we are not. We cannot quit now. We've started something bigger than all of us. We have to finish it. Remember the name Jack Wilder when you see us live, Five Points Queen, 7 o'clock. The show's in a half an hour. It's exactly where we're headed. I don't know, boss. I don't want to be the naysayer, but these guys are they're kind of tricky. Rhodes, they're entertainers. A stunning turnout here in Five Points as the Renegade Horsemen taught the FBI into a final showdown. Rose, Fuller. Go for us. We've got movement. Someone's walking towards the truck. It's a woman. Hey! Shit! What the hell is going on? Hey, it's the guy from the TV. Put your guns down. Look who it is. The fifth horseman. Are you kidding? I'm following them just like you are. I'm not following anybody anymore. You've been ahead of us this whole time, but guess what? I'm ahead of you now. Your ass is mine. You guys are still idiots. Yeah? This happens to be the former rehearsal space for Lionel Strike. It's where I did my first show. Now, if you want to look like even bigger idiots, why not open it? And while you're doing it, Agent Rhodes, would you mind reenacting your look of absolute befuddlement for me? Make a wonderful cover for my DVD. Open the safe. Go ahead. Open it. The hell? What? Give me that. No! No! What is this? Get back! <laughs> Who doesn't love a good magic trick? They have you chasing empty safes again, eh? Once again, misdirection. So starting. Now. Well, the question I'd be asking now, Agent Rose, is what happened to the real one? Magic is deception, but deception designed to delight, to entertain, to inspire. Look out! Clear! 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 Look out! It is about belief, faith, trust. Without those qualities, magic as an art form would no longer exist. But what happens if these qualities are not used for their higher purpose, and instead they're used to cheat, lie? For personal gain or for greed? Well, then it's no longer magic. It's crime. And so tonight, for our final act, you're gonna help us set a few things right. What's going on? 
comes to a close in a rare moment of vulnerability I'd like to express a sentiment to you about our relationship okay well when I first met you I thought you were kind of a dick <laughs> oh. <laughs> and no no that's it that's very nice I'm, yeah I'm touched yeah just from the heart well I didn't tell you where I was touched <laughs> God, what are we going to do when this is over? We're on our own. Our instructions run out after the show. Even if there is no I, if we were completely played and we spend the next 20 years in jail, then I just want to say that. I know. You too. Oh, a little too sentimental for me. Sorry. You were right. It's bigger than all of us. This is one time I'm not happy being right. So I guess this is it. 
Is it? I've been framed. I'm sure you are. Yeah, but I can prove it. I always do. Just like I predicted that you'd play the fool. Let's just drop the theatricality, all right? The, f the cameras aren't rolling in here. Fellas, can I have a few minutes with my friend here alone, please? Sure. <clears throat> all right. I got information to trade. Mm. I believe that's how it's done, huh? If it's of some value. Now, these bars give a man time to think. And I'm pretty sure I know how they did it. Remember the rapid trick in the second show? The box was never empty. The room wasn't either. After gaining access to the warehouse, the horseman left the real safe and transform the whole room into a giant rabbit box. You go charging in there, thinking the safe is already gone. Hey! 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 Missing the trick again, which was to make you think the safe had already been stolen. So you drop your guard and leave. Now, while you were busy playing with balloon animals, someone was breaking into the warehouse. He died right in front of my eyes. Unless, of course, he didn't. It's locked. Weren't you listening? Nothing's ever locked. Ah! <laughs> well done, Mr. Wilder. Good work. You're a big boy now, Jack. He escaped in a standard FBI vehicle, right? Led you to the bridge, where the other horsemen were waiting with an identical replacement car. Now, it only took a split second for you to lose contact with it, make the switch. Crawled into that burning car, quite heroically, I might add. You almost died trying to rescue what I assume was a cadaver from the mall. Why go through such an elaborate and dangerous plan? 
just to frame one guy. Wow. They never kept any of the money they took. Yeah, that's, that's part I haven't been able to put together yet. But I just gave you information that is substantially more important. No, not really. All right. And I finally got a chance to really look into Lionel Shrike, his comeback attempt, his accident. The insurer who denied the family's claim, Tressler Insurance. The bank that carried the note, Credit Republican of Paris. Credit Republicain de Paris. What do you make of that? A sucker is born every minute. What if all this was just leading up to us getting mugged in Central Park at 2 a.m.? No, I'm telling you, we're right where we need to be. We just have to find... That? The Lionel Shrike tree. And the card encased in glass. What do we do now? So here's my new theory. The legend is that the eye is everywhere, waiting for the truly great magicians to distinguish themselves from the mediocre ones. Maybe that was you. Deep down inside, you wanted nothing more than to be part of the eye, but you were never invited. So you try to destroy them, but instead what happens? You piss them off. The eye isn't real. Okay, then explain then. Who's, who's behind all this? Somebody with an obsession. Meticulous. Oh. Somebody prepared to sacrifice everything. Somebody so prepared to lose that there wouldn't even be a suspect until the trick was done. I don't want a profile. I, mean, I need a name. Who? Who? I don't know who. But they had to have access to the warehouse. Plant the mirrors. Always a step ahead of me. And the FBI got past them, not once, not twice, but consistently. Almost as if they were on the end. The inside. That is the question, isn't it? You're right. I can't tell you how long I've waited to see the look on your face. Who are you? What do you want from me? What do I want? I want you to spend the rest of your life in this cell, staring at four walls and wondering how you missed it. How you let yourself be so blinded by your ego you convinced yourself that you were one step ahead when you were always two steps behind. Dylan? Wait a minute. Dylan! How did this happen? I did not see that coming. That's impossible. No way. That was actually uh, pretty good. Thank you. When I said always be the smartest guy in the room. We were in agreement. OK. Right. And Lee. I have never seen her speechless. I take that as a huge compliment. Hey, man, I, I'm so sorry for kicking your ass, really. Sure. Hey, listen, for the record, I, I have always been a 100% believer in the amount of energy I have expended to keep these infidels on point. Mary, oh. you're in. God bless. Come. 
The real magic is taking four strong solo acts and making them all work together. And that's exactly what you did. So welcome. Welcome to the eye. was all connected. Credit Republican, Tressler Insurance. Bonjour. Bonjour. And Elkhorn? What's the connection to Shrike? Uh, Elkhorn started as a safe manufacturer. They used cheap steel. They cut corners. And when he got to the bottom of the river, the safe warped, and he was trapped. He was your father. The morning before the show didn't feel like any other day. When my father said he had to go to work, he could see that I didn't want him to leave. So he gave me his watch, and he told me to count the seconds until he came back. I've never let his watch stop since then. And from that moment on, I created a persona. I planned, I worked out every detail, but the one thing that I couldn't imagine happening was you. And I know that the logical conclusion for you is to take this case to this resolution and for you to turn me in. Yeah. But you know how I feel about resolution and logic. And you also know that I think some things are best left unexplained. One more secret to lock away. <laughs> Come in close, closer. Because now you know our secret. We could be anywhere watching you. We're looking for someone to help us with our next trick. On the count of three, open your eyes and tell me what you see. One, two.
exhausted and hungry oh. and cranky. Oh, man. Check out this place. Where, where did you bring us? Was there no landfill where we were? This place is awesome. Hmm. Is this our new gear? There better not be like matching jumpsuits in there. You know I don't wear spandex. It's locked. Guys, the cards. What, what cards? Sorry, what do you mean, what cards? Hmm. Okay, 